Antelow again and here we are back in my garage for part one of the engine build for a future project and that engine is a Kawasaki Z1000 A1 engine and I've been slowly very slowly buying parts for engine for the last few months because I didn't start off with a complete engine I just started off with an old worn out pair of cases and an old worn out block and that's all I had so I've had to buy, for example, a new crank, well not a new crank, but a, a good second hand crank, second hand gearbox, a head, new pistons, new valves, you know, on and on and on. But I've now got to the point where I think I can make a start on the engine build. So I think we'll start off with something fairly easy, which is assembling the cylinder head, which is right down here now. And here it is. Beautiful cylinder head. It's been slightly coated silver, just like the rest of the engine cases. And when I assembled it all together very loosely, it all looked pretty damn good. However, before I can start to assemble the cylinder head, I've got to sort out quite a big problem. And that problem has been caused because I had the cylinder head and the block and the cases all coated with a very high tech ceramic finish. In this case, it's a silver finish. And to do so before the coating is applied, the whole thing has to be blasted. In this case, I think it was uh, vapor blasted, but nevertheless, the whole thing's got to be blasted. And the problem with that is it leaves behind a lot of grit and sort of very fine sand in all the oilways and passageways of the cylinder head and of course the cases as well and so if you leave them in there your engine won't last very long because it'll soon wear the engine out so i got to remove all the grit and fine sand that's in all these galleries and oilways and that's not going to be easy so how can we do that well i originally thought I'll just go and get uh, a high pressure hose to go and see my mate he's got a big compressor and we'll blow it all out and that's that but apparently not it's not so simple now i did think perhaps my um looks like cleaner might work but this is far too big to fit in my cleaner so i thought well perhaps i can go and take it somewhere and they've got a bigger tank put it in there and it'll get it clean but even that i don't think will work so what can we do what can we do well there is thankfully a solution that other people have found in the past and that relies on the fact that when kawasaki made this cylinder head they had to line drill the galleries from one side of the cylinder head all the way through to the other side that was the only way they could do it you couldn't cast in those those galleries and therefore if you look closely in fact i will show you a photograph of this at each end of the galleries and in fact there are four galleries all together uh, there's one which feeds oil to the cams one that feeds oil to the valves and the valve buckets and obviously there's a pair for each for each cam so we've got four galleries all together and at the end of each gallery there's an aluminium plug that Kawasaki put in there to seal off the galleries once they'd finished doing the boring now those plugs are not supposed to be removed but apparently they can be removed and then once you've finished cleaning out the galleries you make some new plugs and knock them in there and hopefully that's the job done so let me put that down because it's quite heavy so how on earth can we do that well luckily I was watching a video only the other day by that guy um, Alan Milliard and guess what he's currently rebuilding an engine just like mine now he had a complete engine so his life's a bit easier than mine but before he sent the cylinder head off to be blasted he removed those plugs that are on the end of the galleries and what he did was he just drilled a hole in each plug put a tap through it to put a thread on it bolted in a long bolt and then used that bolt to lever out the plug so that's what i'm going to try and do i'm not sure if it's going to work or not but i think i'll go and see uh, my mate jeff in his workshop because he can probably set this up a bit more accurately than, than i can i can't you know i've got no nowhere to hold it securely and safely when i do the drilling so i think two of us combined we should be able to do that you can also then take measurements of those plugs ready to make new plugs on his lathe when the time comes to um 
refit those plugs or new plugs so yeah it all starts off being pretty easy you think yeah i can do a cylinder head then it turns out not to be so easy so let me take the cylinder head over to jeff's workshop later on today and hopefully we can solve that particular problem get it central are you it looks sort of you look all right there yeah There you go. Right, so one done. Four to go. There we go. Okay, it's come out. Right, so one out. Okay. Four to go. Okay. Right, so we've just taken out all of these holes to 8.5 because we're going to put an, an M10 tap in it. Yeah. We did have a problem because we had a um, a drill bit snap in one of these, which was a bit of a nightmare, but we managed to. One of the little aluminium bits that was left. I thought it would have just come out and it but just it snagged and it just dink, yeah, gone. Snapped the, uh, so easy. But we managed to get it out, so that's fine. So now we're going to um, tap it and then we're gonna, we've just been charging right, up the away. air compressor and right, we can. Out. hopefully that'll be that. But we'll see. What I don't want is I'll, I'll give them a blowout first. I don't want that grit getting no, on the tap. No, no, no. So we'll give them a little blowout before we thread them. Okay. Just mind your eye there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Oh, bloody hell. Close your eyes. It's coming back out. Yes. Oh, what you need to do is that for it's as like long as a, possible. It's like playing a flute, you yeah. gotta close off the holes that uh, feed the oil up mm. to the cams and do one at a time. But I think we're on and then you can look look at that, that down there now, that's pretty bad. Now close your eyes now, it's going to be a lot of crap coming out of here. The perfect air blower. Yes it is, yeah. With an, an old... Oh, you've got soldered on a... It's it's one that snapped the thread. It's, it's right. I think it was soldered in somehow. Yes. It's, oh, it works. And it's an old oxyacetylene tip, but the great for getting in all, you know, nooks and crannies. That one now next. Close your eyes. So we'll carry on doing that until hopefully we've uh, got the damn thing clean. Well, the only reason why we're doing that before we're threading is, is then that shot. Yes. If it gets on the tap, it'll jam it up. It'll jam it and put knack the and it'll certainly knack the tap off. Which we don't want. And I can usually and I can look down the, there and there, and it'll give you sort of a good guide. A certainly to, for good enough for. Oh, it's like a plug. Yeah, I know, but you don't want them it, wandering off. You want to try and get as decent, you know, to the hole. Oh, yeah, yeah. If they start wandering off, it's not going to get any thread oh, okay. and it's not going to seal. So mm -hmm. they've got to be relatively accurate. Mm -hmm. Right, so we've now drilled and tapped out these, what are they called? Yeah. Uh, well, oil galleries, uh, oil holes. Yeah. They're, they're now at 10 by 1.5. Yes. Now, one point we didn't realise, what I should have realised, was that the oil feed is only about 10 mil in from here. So when we put a plug in, we're going to make sure we don't go more than 10 mil because it would. Well, it's a big hole. It's not so a big hole, you, but you, nevertheless. Well, what even if you on? block half of it, well, it's still going to get the oil through. We don't want to do that. Yeah. So, no. So as, next, as long as it's bigger than what them are, oh, you'll, yeah, be, yeah. you'll be... So next then, um, next phase, if you like, if I turn up this here, we have got to remove the old Let me. Um, valve seals here, which you don't have to get out. Remove you, these. You need something, there'll be something, a special also, thing to I pull them off, yeah. these rather rusty looking um, valve seats here. Because these could be harbouring a bit of grit. We've just been moving them a little bit, trying to get them out. Yeah, and they, so won't, they won't come in out right, to check. Out. Yeah, they've got to come out, be cleaned, and make sure everything is as clean as possible. So my next job then is to take this home, remove the valve seals, remove these valve se these um, spring seats, 
get them cleaned up, maybe bring it back here, get it blasted one more time, get it blown through. Well, if you take you you ta so. ta that compressor, you can do it at all. No, no, I've got a little compressor, but not, <laughs> not a big well, one. Well, it's entirely up to you. Yeah, just keep going, keep going. Yeah. And as you can see here, not as you can tell, look, the, yeah. the muck. It's, it came out of me, you wouldn't believe. It's, uh, and we've swept a lot of it off. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you had to get... Well, there, you know, a lot of it's the filing. I don't but... know what everybody else does when it comes to having a head or an engine blasted, because how else, how else do you get the crap out? I don't know. Well, like you were saying, you, you, you think you could blow that out and that out, and it might come out this hole here, but at the end of that gallery, yeah, if it's dead, trapped... There's a dead spot. Yeah, and... If it's not all smooth where the air can... Yeah, yeah. Flow everything out, you're in yeah. big trouble. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't want, we don't want to do that. We don't want to wreck the engine no. before we begin. So a bit more work required on this engine yet. And uh, yeah. yeah, we're trying to get it, out the uh, that these valve seats. That one's yeah, that's loose. Yeah, it's a bit loose. That one's not. It will if you if you've got something like that just to. Yeah, I'll take it home, I'll, I'll get them out. Oh yeah, it's one way I think that's loose now, is it skinny? Yeah, it's fitted to get them out, it's not a lot of space to work. Oh yeah, it's loose, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. loose. Right, well. Just, it wants something like, either like a screw, just, yeah, if yeah. you keep tapping it, it'll just work its way. Yeah, okay. Right, so that And then. then you can get, make sure clean and yeah. make sure there's none right. of that. I certainly will. That glass, is it like, I think it's glass bead. Well, I think it was vapor blasted, but even that leaves behind a... Well, either, I think they use a glass bit. or a very fine, very fine. sand, well, yes. it's well sand, it's glass, isn't it? Yes, it's glass, it gets it. blasted, it gets even smaller. Yeah. Anyway, with, with that, I'll take it home, do a bit more work on the head, and hopefully we'll get there in the end. Oh, yeah. And now, here we are back home again. So, in the last day or so, I have removed the old valve seals, which put up quite a fight because they all ripped as I tried to remove them, but we got them in the end. I then removed all the uh, spring seats, here they are here, removed them, which revealed even more grit and sand beneath them. So that's not unexpected, so I took the head back to Jeff's, we give it yet another blowout with its air compressor, and now it's pretty much spotless, and I can now begin at last the rebuild of the cylinder head. So let me put that down a second, because it's quite heavy, and I'll show you what's next and so here we have all the things I need to rebuild the cylinder head in fact I've got more than I need I've got more buckets than I need I've got more springs than I need because I ended up with two sets so what I've done is I've measured all the springs and picked the ones which are the correct length the workshop manual tells you the correct length of these springs so in fact they're all okay so I just picked the ones which are cleanest I've also got obviously two sets of uh, spring seats I've got quite a few shims here these are shims which you need to use to set the valve clearances the chances are I won't have the exact number I need to get all the valve clearances correct but that's okay because my friend Les has about a hundred odd of them in a big bag so we can always swap them out and how they work by the way is that uh, these buckets sit on top of the valves and then the these shims sit on top of that in a little recess as you can see and that gives you the clearance between the bucket and the cam. Now all of these should have a number stamped on them. In this case it says 235, so that's obviously uh, I think it's 2.35 millimeters. Sometimes those numbers are worn off, so you've got to use your vernier caliper, or in this case my uh, micrometer to measure the actual thickness before you use them. Right, so that's that. I've also just got in these uh, grub screws, these are 10 mil M10 by 1.5 which matches the threads we put on the the uh, the holes we drilled out on the cylinder head so th th those have to go in I've also got brand new valves here I've got a brand new set of valves because I didn't have any um, what I've also just bought actually that's I've wanted for quite a long time oops, is um, this little tool here this little tool is for changing the shims on the buckets when the cams are in place now I won't be fitting the cams today because if I did, they've only got to come out anyway when I um, fit the cam chain and when I fit the cylinder head to the engine, so that will have to wait. But this, I've been wanting one of these for ages and I got it for about £25 second hand, so that's uh, quite handy to have. Also we've got here uh, the split collets. These are used to retain the valves and they can be a bit fiddly to fit, but hopefully we'll get there okay. And finally over here, We've got a new set of, of um, valve seals. As I say, the old ones were a right pain to get rid of. So I've asked around and it seems a good way of 
seating these on the cylinder head is to use a 10 mil socket because it just fits over the top of the uh, seal it helps you to press them down without damaging these because these are quite delicate they're quite sort of soft rubbery so you don't want to use too much force on there so hopefully I've got everything I need so there are quite a lot of good videos on YouTube because I've been watching them about how to rebuild a cylinder head so I'm not going to go through every single possible uh, option but here we've got the valves look brand new valves uh, these are from Z Power these are not OE from Kawasaki because Kawasaki valves are about £70 each so these weren't that expensive fortunately uh, so now I think I'll start off by fitting these grub screws into the cylinder head I'll use some uh, strong Loctite for that we don't want them leaking or coming out so that's what I'll start doing right first two done And so next to fit the valve seals I've got a bit of oil into the seal first then I'm using this weird screwdriver and a 10 mil socket which just happens to be the right size to go over the top of the valve seal like so and that will help me guide it down into the bucket like so it's a bit fiddly especially when I'm filming but that will go on like so just gently push it and you hit click then it's in so that's now in place pretty simple I must say quite an easy way of doing things and now I've got all eight valve seals in place and it wasn't too difficult except I made a rather stupid mistake when I first started because when I first fitted these first two valve seals I forgot to fit these valve seats and they have to go on first because if they don't they don't fit oh, what a mistake so now I've got to remove these two new valve seals before I can fit these two seats and the problem I've got is these are very difficult to remove as I found when I removed the first set of all valve seals and I fear to remove them I'm going to, have to destroy these two valve seals which is a bit of a pain because it must have got to buy new ones and I think you have to buy them in a set of eight which might be quite an expensive mistake fortunately these aren't too expensive but before I attempt to destroy them I have a word with my friend Les who's an expert on these things and maybe he's got a tool or something to remove these seals without damaging them but somehow I doubt it. I mean they're really easy to fit but they're not easy to remove because they sit flush with the side of the uh, valve guide and they're really difficult to remove but anyway we'll see. And so let's pretend that problem didn't occur so I can still fit at least six of the eight valves. So here's the first one. This is a brand new exhaust valve going in put a smear of oil around it keep it happy and here it goes now that's brand new valve and I've also had the head skimmed and all the valve seats recut so hopefully that shouldn't need any more work and next we fit the inner spring and the outer valve spring like that and after that we fit the top valve collet here like that and now I need to use my spring compressor to compress the spring so I can um, squeeze the spring and fit the two split collets. And so I've used my spring compressor to compress the spring so hopefully I can now fit these two split collets which will hold the valve and the spring in place. Right well I guess the first one's always a bit tricky but I've now compressed the spring I've got the two collets in place I'm not sure you can see that and now I'm just going to gently release the pressure on the spring and hopefully as it rises it will lock two collets in place on the spring and that will be this particular valve fitted let's have a look hopefully it won't spring off it's a while you really right be very gentle and there you are thank god for that actually it took me longer than it should have done but never mind first one done and now I've got to do the other seven or rather the other five because I can't do the remaining two because I've not yet got the uh, spring seat in place that's a mistake of mine no doubt because I'm thinking about the camera and filming rather than what I was doing so that's something I'll come back to later on so yeah there you go by the way this corrosion here isn't really a problem because I've got to fit brand new 
camshells for, for the uh, cam bearings anyway. I do have the old ones here. Here are the old ones. And these have been blasted so they're no good to me anymore. So I've got to buy a new set of camshells. But all that can wait. So now I've got to finish off fitting the other five valves. And uh, yeah, I think that will be about it for today. And so there's all six of the valves that I can fit now fitted. So that's fine. Obviously, I think um, I'm going to end up destroying those two new valve seals that are fitted incorrectly. But I've just checked online and I can buy them individually, so it's not such a big hit to the uh, pocket. So anyway, that's it for now. I was hoping to do a bit more today, but I think that's about it. So in part two of this engine build, we will finish off the work on the cylinder head. Uh, as I say, I won't fit the cams yet because the cams have to come out anyway when I fit the head to the complete engine because they've got to come out to fit the cam chain so that'll have to wait so in part two then we'll finish off the cylinder head and make a start on the bottom end so that's it for now so thanks for watching and cheers